Okay, so in this short video we're going to look at um, an app called Desmos. And Desmos is basically a graphing calculator app, but more importantly it's a very good way for us to uh, graph something and then allow us to uh, put it in any type of file such as a, a Word document or something like that. So first things first, you want to go to desmos.com. Okay, D-E-S-M-O-S, -S, and then this is the site you're going to see. And as you can see right here, they do have apps available for both the uh, Google for an Android as well as an App Store. Um, both of those apps are available. Um, and in either case, what I'm about to show you, they're going to look exactly the same. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click this giant red button. This is Launch Calculator. I'm going to click that right away. And what's going to show up is the basic graphing interface. Now, this is the exact same thing you will see if you launch the app with a couple of small, small changes, such as button positioning and things like that, such as the plus button and uh, things like this. The plus button will actually be over here to the left of the three dashes, if I remember correctly. But it, for the most part, it's the exact same. And one thing I really want to call to your attention is right up here is the Create Account button. Now, if you have a Google account, it's highly, highly, highly recommended to uh, actually sign in with your Google account because you can actually save any graphs that you do. Um, as well as if you're using the actual computer, you can't actually export uh, any of your graphs without actually signing in. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click sign in because I've already created an account and it gives me the option right there to sign in with your Google account or if you want you could create a separate account but I'm already signed in with Google so I'm going to use my school's email and there we go. So I am uh, logged in now. Okay and now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to input this. So you can see your graph field and what you saw earlier is you saw the keypad. Now on the computer, uh, it has this show keypad button, high keypad button. Um, that really doesn't exist uh, on the app. Um, it's only really for the computer. But uh, in this case, we're going to actually keep it shown. So that way you can see what we're going to do uh, for the app as well as the uh, on the computer. So for, uh, for a situation where you want to plot some points, we're going to come up here and we're going to hit the uh, the plus sign, which is the add item. I'm going to click that right there, and it's going to give me a few options. And for us to actually enter data, we're going to go ahead and we're going to click table. Now, in the event that I have this actually copied, or not copied, but entered on a uh, Excel spreadsheet or a sheet spreadsheet, I can copy and paste, but in this case, we're not going to do that. We're actually going to type it in. So for an experiment that we did uh, in, in a class, um, we were testing the uh, uh, breaking strength of uh, different types of pasta. So in that case, our independent variable or our x variable went on were uh, 1 or was 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 noodles. Now you'll notice there's no way to actually label it. We'll come back to that. And then I'm just going to make up some data here. We'll say that my first one took 11 objects. My second one took 25 objects. My third one took 37 objects, my fourth one took, we'll say 50 objects, and my fifth one took only 55. So we have our item, we have our graphs right there, okay? And what you'll notice is the dots are not over here. Um, even though I've entered them and they should show up, they're not actually over here. Um, that's because if you look at your scale, and I, I'll click out of the keypad, um, if you uh, look at your scale, the scale goes from negative 10 to positive 10 and from positive 6 to negative 6 along the y-axis. Which, if we follow our data, that means none of the points fall on this. So there are a couple of options. Now if you use the app, you can use your fingers and pinch and zoom and so on and so forth. On the computer, I can actually scroll out. And what will happen is you'll start to see the points. And see, so there are five points. Now, the problem is this doesn't make a very good graph because everything's real tight in here. So what we want to do is we want to be able to actually select our, ax or our range. Now, on the app, you can zoom in and try and make it as, as nice as possible. But there's a much quicker way. Up here in the top right-hand corner, and it's always in the top right-hand corner as far as I've seen, is this little graph settings, uh, this little wrench that we want to go ahead and we want to click on that. Uh, if we click on that, we don't really care about the projector mode, but and I don't think that shows up on the app, but this will. Everything down here will. 
And this is where this gets really important, okay? First, you'll notice here's your x-axis, and you'll also notice here's your y-axis, okay? Now, the interesting thing, sorry, misclick on that. The interesting thing about that is just to the right of it is the label. Now, for this experiment, our x-axis was number of noodles. And you'll notice as I type this right here, it filled in. So here, I'm going to delete it, and you can see it disappearing, and then it'll show back up right there. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to title the y-axis, and this was number of weights slash objects, because we want every axis to always be labeled. But that still doesn't solve the, the problem of our, our range and the graph being all squished here. So if you notice directly underneath the word x-axis and y-axis, you'll see these numbers. Okay, well this is actually the range. So if I click here or on the app I tap there, these numbers are going to be interactable. So I can actually type this in. Now I know my x-axis went from 1 to 5, but I want to give myself a little bit of a, a, a berth, a little bit of a outside range, because I don't want my axis to, to go flush up with my screen. So I'm going to say negative 1. And you can see it already moved over there. And then I'm going to say a positive. Since I only went to 5, I'm going to say a positive 6. And I can even choose my steps here. So I can go by 1s, I can go by 0.5s. But in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and say 1s. And you can see it goes ahead and it gets rid of all those other steps in between. Okay. We're going to do the same thing for the y-axis. So in this case, I'm going to say negative 10 because the scale is a little bit wider here. So we have that. And then we only went up to 55. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say... We'll just say 65, just to be safe, okay? And then I click the gear, and we can see there's my there's my graph. Now, first instinct would be to actually create a, uh, a connected dot graph, which to do that, I would click this, hold it down, and then I, you see I've got that option to connect it. But in our situation, for the class in which we want to, we want to, find the best fit line that doesn't help us that line's actually completely worthless so in the event that you see these dots actually completely connected we don't want that so to get rid of that you hold on that in the style you just want it to be the dots okay so that's what you want to see but that still doesn't solve our problem we're not completely done here because we do need to find our line of best fit now our line of be best fit actually ties in when we click underneath here so we click there, and it's going to let me type things in there. So I'm going to bring up the uh, keypad for this so you can see what I'm doing. Now, the way that we're going to do this is we're going to start. We're going to go through our progression of lines. Now, our first line that we're going to follow is our first uh, equation that we're going to follow is the simplest one. So the first one you should always test is the uh, the linear linear equation, which if we know the linear equation is y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to go ahead and hit y equals but you'll notice there's no letters here. Well, in the bottom left, you're going to have ABC. Okay, and then this will bring up the rest of the letters. So Y equals MX. Now, before I type this, I want you to watch this. Okay, this right here. Or, I'm sorry, not yet. MX plus B. And what you will notice is that nothing shows up. The reason is, is because right here, see how it says Y1? Well, I have to assign these value, values to this uh, data. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to type that in. So I'm going to put a 1 next to the y, and I'm going to put a 1 next to the x. And notice what happened. These things cleared out, and there's a reason for that. So this, do this deletes my graph, and that's not good. So we don't want that. So what we're actually going to do is we don't want to use the equal sign, okay? because the equal sign will replace our data, and that doesn't help us. So instead, if we go to the go from the numbers to the letters area, there's this little tilde, this little squiggly line. If we click that, it actually assigns the line. And what you'll notice is it follows that, and it finds the best fit line. Now, you can tell this is best fit because most of the dots are close to it. They're not perfect, but they are fairly close. And no dot is increasing in its uh, distance from the line. It's just basically kind of scattered around. And this makes sense for experimental values. You rarely will have all of the... Uh, your data points dead on that line because uh, you're just going to have experimental error that's going to potentially change your data. So now that we have our line, we've got a few things that we can do. First off, this line has a slope, and this program is very nice. It actually gives me the slope here, and we can see that our slope is about 11.3. In addition to that, it also gives us our B, 
our y-intercept, which is important when we uh, try to plug in the equation. Okay. So now that we've got our graph and we have these numbers, let's go ahead and let's, how are we going to actually export this? Now, on a tablet or any other type of uh, mobile device, what you're going to have to do, because as of, as of September 15th, uh, 2015 when this video was recorded there was no way of exporting uh, the graph so what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to just take a screenshot which is simple enough um, Android you uh, there are different variations but um, for the tablets or for some tablets you hold the down volume button and the power button or excuse me the lock button all at the same time you hold them for about two seconds it'll snap a screenshot uh, some phones you hold your switch app button for uh, a few seconds and um, and then on iPhones or any iOS device uh, you hold your lock button and your home button and it'll take a, a screenshot of what you have so that you may have to check into your uh, your particular device to figure that out but if you're on the computer you're gonna come up here to where we originally click sign in and then this box right here this little share box is kind of the default share box there's that little arrow going out and a box in the center I'm gonna click that and you have a few options and in this case I'm just gonna go ahead and click image and it's going to bring up an image as well as a link to it and so now I have this picture that I can either right click and copy or I can save and insert and so on and so forth so in this particular case we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna save image because that's going to be the most important one and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save this right here as a graph I'm going to go ahead and save it. So now that's that's been saved, we can go back to the document. So to go to the document, what we do is we take this, we uh, just switch over to the document. Now, if I want to insert it, we've got a couple of options. Now, obviously, this is the web-based view. So there's a lot more options here than it is if you were in the app. So you can access this on mobile devices. You just go in through your browser. But in the event of you using a, um, a mobile device, an app, what you'll see is you'll see a plus sign up at the top. Um, the location will vary uh, depending on what, what type of device you're using. But you'll usually see a plus sign or three little lines that kind of look like this blue in the top. And what you will do is you'll tap on that and it will give you an option to insert an image, at which point you can insert the image. Um, if not on a computer, all we're going to do is we're going to click insert. We're going to click image and actually let's go to the right spot because our results is right here and that's where we want to insert our graph. So we'll go to the next line, we'll insert image and I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop that. Sorry, it took me a second to find it. I had a bunch of files there. So drag and drop that, and it will let me upload, and there's your graph. So it's now inserted into the picture, and it's easy to read, and so on and so forth. Now, the next thing you need to be able to do is you need to be able to do your calculations. Now, our equations are always going to follow the y equals mx plus b format. What you will do is, in the event that the original graph was a curve, obviously to linearize it, you would have to square it, so that would change the x to an x squared. Um, and I know I'm not using superscript there, but you, you know, you, you can take care of that within here. Um, x squared, or 1 over m times 1 over x, okay, or whatever you would have to do to modify it to linearize that line. But we never want to leave these letters alone, so that means we have to replace them appropriately. Now, y is pretty simple. It's whatever the y variable is. So if we look right here, and we'll switch over here so it's easier to read, um, you'll see here is our number of weights or objects. So that means y would be number of objects equals... Now, m is our slope, so m is actually a number, and if we come back here to where we saw it before, it 
we actually can see m and m, so m is going to be 11, 11.3 to be specific. So it's 11.3. However, that's a number, so that needs a unit. So how do, if you remember how we calculate uh, slope, it's rise over run. And so the rise is what value? The rise is weights, number of weights or number of objects. And the run is noodles. So if I were to write that, it would be 11.3 objects per noodle. So that would be my unit there. And then I would be multiplying this by x, but we don't want to write x. We want to actually write the unit. Let's get rid of that graph. We don't need it. And our x is going to be number of noodles. So times, and we'll use a star here. And then we're going to have our y-intercept. And our y-intercept in this case, as we saw right here, is about 1.7. But once again, that's a number, needs a unit, and so this is the y-intercept, which means it's where it intercepts the y-axis, which would be right there. Okay, so that means if it's on the y-axis, that means it's going to be that as our unit, so number of objects. So 1.7 objects. Oops. So hopefully this video showed you how we can graph a set of data using Desmos, um, how you can create your best fit line, um, how you can export the video, or not, excuse me, video, but the, uh, the image into a Google Doc or any other Word document, but in this case a Google Doc, um, for submission. So uh, if you have any questions or uh, notice any errors, please go ahead and leave a comment below. Otherwise, thank you very much and have a good day.